How do you feel? Well, fork me. You must be that Stellaron they were talking about. <laughs> Don't worry. She's been up and about for a while now. But hey, Don Hung, why don't you introduce this cowboy to her first? Allow me to introduce him to you. This, during our pursuit of a certain person, we crossed paths and just so happened to uncover a shocking plot being concocted by Mr. Sunday. <laughs> Which is why we sought you out, to help the Astral Express save the world together. No need for thanks. Now the Galaxy Ranger's principle is correct every injustice one sees. That's how you lot in the CN show put it, right, Don Hung? Uh, more or less. Wait, hold on a sec. This is the first time I'm hearing about this certain person. Who are you chasing? And why would that lead you to the Express? <laughs> uh, good question. <laughs> it's, uh... Um, who was it again? Uh, Don Hung, do you remember? No, that ain't it. I just can't seem to recall. <sighs> Weird. My neurochip hasn't registered any malfunctions. It... <clears throat> I can't seem to remember either. Uh, what's going on? <sighs> Vic, forget about it. If it slipped all our minds, reckon that person was just a minor scoundrel. Unimportant. Ain't gonna stop us from piecing together this- Yes. When the dust settles, I'll just think of a way to recall it in the memory zone. Everyone. Let's hurry up and look for Miss Himigo, shall we? She's now a minor star on Panacone, and the entire hotel's concerned about her well-being. You're right. Let's head to the lobby, then. That's all right. In these times of conflict for the sake of utmost safety, it is only right that the Alliance steps forward to mediate on behalf of the Astral Express. We must not allow you to take unnecessary risks. Furthermore, despite the IPC's eagerness for success, it prioritizes peace above all. And the family, trapped though it may be, professes a desire for harmony. The Alliance has always won people over with reason. I firmly believe both parties can indeed put aside their differences and come to a peaceful agreement. The General possesses a deep understanding of the greater good. With the Sienjo Alliance mediating, peace for Pentagoni is within reach. <laughs> you flatter me. But ultimately, it's been all down to the Express. Without your efforts, this sweet dream paradise would have been claimed by the last remnants of order before there was even a shot at peace. Well, would you look at that? Here comes the big hero.
<laughs> if it isn't the galactic baseballer, a true hero who dares to take action. Are you okay? I heard you couldn't wake up. Are you feeling unwell? Uh, don't worry, Mr. Yang. There's nothing wrong with her. She practically burned through a lifetime's worth of jokes on the way here. What about you, Mr. Yang? I heard that even Miss Robin wasn't spared. And that guy locked you both up. <sighs> it's a long story. But at least Mr. Sunday took it easy on us. He used an ability called tuning to connect our consciousnesses with his. In other words, he imprisoned us within his consciousness. Thanks to General Jing Yuan's destruction of the Harmonious Choir, we were able to escape. Uh, he used that tuning on us too! Does that mean that we were almost imprisoned as well? I can confidently say now, he was truly after a fair fight with us. Had he wanted, he could have... Speaking of the Oak family head, where is he now? It's complicated, but in a nutshell, he's now the former Oak family head. The IPC has named him the key figure in the family's Panacone split, citing a threat to cosmic peace. He must represent the family and answer for the unrest caused. His trial is set to take place at Pier Point. The family quickly labeled him and the remnants of the Order as enemies, declaring the turmoil an internal rebellion. This move effectively barred the IPC from intervening in family affairs. And everyone really has their own agenda, after all. Then, what's going to happen to Miss Robin? She and Sunday won't be able to deny their involvement in the Charmony Festival. They're siblings, after all. <sighs> Why the sigh, General? I can only say that this incident is an unexpected mess for the girl. The Alliance will try to persuade the family to consider this matter carefully during mediation. It's time. The IPC's key members and I have agreed to consult one another before the upcoming negotiation. Do any of you wish to sit in? Given the General's invitation and the matter's significance to the universe, the crew will naturally accept. However, if the IPC has any reservations... Why, of course you're welcome. They've mentioned that your team is a trusted ally of the IPC and Pentagon, so there's no reason not to welcome you. Besides, if there can be reliable observers from the Astral Express present, discussions will go more smoothly. So, what do you all think? <laughs> well then, we shall oblige. I'm kind of allergic to those types of situations. I think I'll just head back to my room and start packing. Not to worry. Himiko and I won't take care of things. I'm afraid I'll also have to return to the Express first. The conductor is worried about us. It's best I go and explain the situation. Thank you. What about you, hmm? Will you join Welton me? Or have you... What? I can pack it myself, you know. <laughs> if that's the case, our galactic baseballer can join us. Although I'm not too sure of the reason, the representatives from the IPC have insisted on her presence. Allow me to lead the way. Follow me, please. The negotiation will commence at the hotel lobby. Everyone, please follow me.
Anything is possible within a dream. Mr. Aventurine and Miss Topaz are here too. Oh, and who is that over there? The Intelligentsia Guild's Dr. Ratio. This assembly is quite something. It's been a while, my Astral Express friends. I would also extend my sincere thanks to you, General of the Lawfu. The presence of everyone here assures that the talks will likely reach a conclusion that satisfies all sides. Oh, looks like everyone has come with expectations. Care to share? Of course. Topaz, if you please. Sure, leave it to me. In summary, that's good news. After much deliberation from the Strategic Investment Department's Council, the absolute majority of members have agreed to the following resolutions. In light of long-term considerations for interastral peace, and by authority of Pierpoint HQ, the Strategic Investment Department, on behalf of the Interastral Peace Corporation, will permanently relinquish its claim on Panacone sovereignty and offer unconditional support of the family's rebuilding efforts on Panacone. Ah. Uh. <laughs> now that's something. And to be honest, it does nothing to benefit the IPC. But it is extremely beneficial to the long-term development of the entire universe. Has the IPC finished sharing all its thoughts? Then it's our turn. The Guild, much like the Genius Society, has taken a keen interest in the recent calamity in Panacone. Ultimately, both parties have agreed to a comprehensive collaboration, offering technical support for the reconstruction of Panacone. The floor is yours for the finer points, Mr. Skrullum. Enlighten us, please. Organic life's unrelenting search to understand the realm of inner spirituality is something I both admire and envy. Inorganic life has no mechanism to evoke dreams. But when my mechanical impulses are activated, my inspiration circuits will start to operate, and I will enter a state defined as imagination. Every time, within the realm of imagination, there emerges a fire from the shadows. It is warm, bright. I frequently ponder this flame might represent the essence of intelligence. A cluster of inspiration ignited by high temperatures. The future direction of the universe may well lie within it. Alas, they are nothing but projections of my thought system to me. Desired, but unattainable. But after learning of Penacone's accomplishments, I have come to realize that the flame is not beyond my grasp. After deliberations with my partners, we have decided to defer the progress of the Simulated Universe project. And instead, assist the Intelligentsia Guild as technological consultants in the research of the Dreamscape and Memory Zone, so that these assets may be better used to serve humanity. Not only that, we've also established contact with the Garden of Recollection through the IPC, and they've pledged their support for our research endeavors. I'm truly happy for the Dream Chasers on Panacone. The cosmos's brightest and, let's admit, dimmer intellects are now at their service. But, uh, never mind. At the end of the day, this is a positive outcome. <laughs> no wonder everyone insisted that she be there. It heartens me to learn that everyone is willing to put aside their differences for Pentacone's plight. I trust that everyone will surely reach consensus in the upcoming negotiations. 
Looks like Panacone's future is decided. I'm wondering, is there anything else the crew is concerned about? Peace is our greatest wish. Beyond that, we desire nothing else. <laughs> well, that's good. Now that everyone's minds are at ease, I shall take my leave. You may now depart with peace of mind. If that's the case, it appears that we have nothing else to worry about on Penicone. Looks like it's time for us to embark on a new voyage. Sounds good to me. You two head back to the Express first. I'll pick up March and deal with the checkout procedure. Oh, also, Miss Black Swan, you have a matter to discuss with me, yes? <laughs> Nothing escapes your attention, Miss Navigator. You've been with us this whole time, huh? In any case, she and I will be waiting for you and March on the Express. Let's go. Our time on Penicone has come to a fruitful end. Panacone's journey ends here. I guess it was pretty fruitful. to decide our next stop? <laughs> How we doing this? But show of hands. Hold your horses, cowboy. It's for those to decide. <laughs> Shouldn't this be expected of a memo keeper? Allow me to explain. Mr. Boothill and Miss Black Swan submitted a request to temporarily travel with the Express for their own personal reasons. As you all may know, the Astral Express never declines any passenger whose heart yearns for the distant stars. Therefore, they will be traveling with us for a while until they reach their destinations. Whoa, the Express is going to be much livelier now! Miss Black Swan, you better not use your memo keeper abilities to pull any pranks. <laughs> Understood, Miss March. I promise you, you'll never see me in your room while you're taking a break. Uh, don't! You're freaking me out! Alright, alright, now that everyone's met everyone, we can continue our navigation meeting. Firstly, wishes to thank everyone. If it weren't for you all unearthing the truth about Penacone, Pom Pom would have never known where Mikhail and the rest had gone. What they had to go through was regrettable, but I reckon they all fulfilled their wishes. And it was thanks to all of you. Thank you, everyone. Now then, we come to the crux of this navigation meeting. We must decide on the Express's next stop. Let me introduce our current options. The first choice is from Himiko, the oceanic planet of Lushaka, a planet composed entirely of water. Many aquatic races reside there. Of course, it's also the home planet of the venerable. The second choice is the agate world Melustanin, suggested by Welt. It's famed as one of the initial sites of the Stellaron disaster and the place where the beauty Idrilla ascended. Today, it's celebrated as a planet of undying allure. The third choice is Edo Star, a planet nestled within a vast ion storm region currently under assault by the Antimatter Legion. However, the distress signals from there have recently ceased prompting the IP. The last choice, courtesy of Black Swan, is the glass belt Petravia, a massive belt of asteroids that was turned to glass by the Lord Ravager Zephyro. 
These days, it's apparently known to house one of the branches of the morning actor's troupe. Ooh, so many options. I'm seeing... Next up, everyone will select the destination that they wish to visit. And then, we'll put it to a vote. Though the fact that the distress signals have ceased means we're probably too late. But I still think we should investigate the situation there. Yes, I agree. As Nameless, should we not extend a helping hand? You and Don Hung make good points. I'll throw in a vote for Edo Star 2. If that's the general sentiment, then we should indeed investigate. I vote for Edo Star 2. All votes for Edo Star! Looks like we have a winner! Next stop, Edo Star! Then this navigation meeting is adjourned! I'll go check the warp jump coordinates. Everyone can catch up on some rest in the meantime. When it's time to make the jump, Pom Pom will make an announcement. There's still some time before the jump. What should I do? <laughs> How about a chat? Over here. Oh, you're here. Seeing your reflection among the stars in the porthole. <laughs> really does seem somewhat surreal. How about it? This journey of beautiful dreams. Was it to your liking? Oh, such elusive emotions. I've never encountered memories quite like this before. It stirred my curiosity. So, how about you hand that small parting gift back to me? I'm quite eager to have it back. Hmm. Oh? Hmm. Never mind. I just stumbled upon a particularly fascinating spot in your memory. Before I explain, I would like to apologize to you. This farewell gift I gave you isn't really a compass from the memory zone, but merely an empty light cone. Remember when we entered the hotel in the dreamscape for the first time, and I procured a few trinkets from your companions. Their function. This way, I can always be attuned to your location, ready to assist immediately if you encounter any threats. But this is not its most intrinsic function. Light cones are slices of light used to encapsulate solidified phenomena. This empty light cone is the same. It can etch your memories in their most vivid form, and then allow me to admire and manipulate them, turning them into unique mementos. All the world is born from the power of mind and soul, and that power is memory. To prevent ourselves from being forgotten by the world, we must make the world remember us or use our memories to recreate it. Life, seemingly vast, offers but a scant collection of impactful memories. Some joyful, some sorrowful, some light, some heavy. But you are different. Memory is a reflection of the future. Within that reflection, I see your unparalleled worth. You have the power to craft memories that can captivate the world. Your memory can illuminate the universe's future path. And that memory 
will be as scintillating as the star clusters you see in this porthole. Precisely. But do you know the deeper meaning behind it? The reason is simple. In this grandiose and ostentatious dream of the families, only you personally experienced the entire course. <laughs> Patience, my friend. I will reveal the answer to you, but that time is not now. Turn around and take a look at your friends. Every one of them is reveling at the arrival of their next destination, all filled with hopes and expectations of their own present and future. Revealing everything at this moment would be a bit of a buzzkill, wouldn't it? I'm looking for an opportune time, a time when you're totally at ease. Perhaps when the night grows hazy and you're about to drift off would be the most opportune. How about one fine night? I will prepare the candles, aromatics, and even a cushy couch to create a cozy dreamland for you. And then I will tell you the answer in the form of a little bedtime story to lull you to sleep. It looks like we're finally about to set off. There are countless gleaming memories out there waiting for us. Why don't we just leave it at that for now? Ah, that's right. As a small token of compensation for playing that little trick on you with the empty light cone, I will gift you with some words. They hold great life is akin to a winding labyrinth where memories serve as our sole companions. <laughs> You'll remember these words dearly, won't you? In the year 2158 of the Amber Era, the first year of the new epoch, the universe resumed its intended trajectory the kindling of conspiracy smoldered in Panacone, the land of the dreams. Failing to erupt into a blaze, it instead flickered briefly on Klopoth's anvil, before vanishing in the blink of an eye. The dead and those fated to die remain in their eternal slumber while the living find solace in deep sleep. All clamored in a cacophony of silence and then went about their own ways. The cosmos emanated a vitality characteristic of a new era, all for the modest price of a brother and sister's mild grief. Babies are born as stars extinguish, the silver rail unfolds. The story of the Astral Express comes to a close, yet it also embarks anew. Time marches forward, heralding the arrival of a new chapter in the history of trailblazing expeditions.
countless shooting stars streak the sky tonight. If you can pick the right one, it will carry your wish to thousands of distant worlds. You're feeling very relaxed now, aren't you? So it's time to tell you a little bedtime story. Well, let's start with a conclusion. The crew was defeated in the battle against Sunday. Everyone in Panacone failed, and no one survived. But don't panic. The truth, as horrifying as it may be, is not yet irreversible. Next, I'll use this empty light cone that carries all your memories to relive everything that happened before. And when this story reaches its end, I'm sure someone as clever as you will notice that. There's a major flaw in the story you have experienced. Yet, within that flaw lies a glimmer of hope. Are you ready for it? Do you remember everything? When the clock turned back, the Express started a warp jump, sending you to a strange dream. You were bewildered back then, and then a galaxy range when you arrived at the Reverie Hotel, you met the doorman Misha and had a confrontation with a Venturine, an IPC representative. After that, you saved Firefly and explored Panacone together. During the tour, you ran into Sparkle disguised as Sampo and accidentally entered a tr There, I rescued both of you from death, but Firefly didn't return to reality. She realized the truth and tried to involve you in her plan, but that resulted in an accidental death. The two cases of death prompted you to investigate the truth behind the sweet dream. Despite your efforts to gather information about the two victims, you didn't make much progress. But you did learn about the Watchmaker from Gallagher. Meanwhile, Aventurine was secretly carrying out his scheme, in which you were one of the pawns. In the midst of a fierce battle, Acheron revealed her true identity as an emanator of the Nihility, and unsheathed her sword. That strike foiled Aventurine's plan, and opened a passage between the Sweet Dream and the original Memory Zone. Upon your arrival at Dreamflux Reef, you learned the truth that death was actually dormancy. As well as the truth about the- You split up with Sunday and Robin, looking for a way to seal the Stellaron. However, it turned out that Sunday and the Dream Master had their own hidden agenda. Finally, the story reached its conclusion. You emerged victorious, with the Trailblaze triumphing over the Order and Panacone embracing a bright and peaceful future. This marks the end of the thrilling journey in Panacone. I'm sure you've already noticed something unusual, haven't you? The major flaw, which contradicts all the known information, hides in this story. Suggesting that the sleeping and shapeless never bestows its gaze upon anyone, and thus no one can truly possess the power of the nihility? That's a very astute guess, but unfortunately, Acheron did progress further down the path of the nihility. Her unwavering belief in liberating the world from the grasp of paths surpasses the capabilities of ordinary humans. I'll discard that incorrect answer for you. Take your time and think it through. What is the fatal flaw? It is true that Gallagher is a history fictionologist, but 
he didn't lie in this matter. In addition, death and dormancy do arise from the same concept, don't they? This is not the fatal flaw in your adventure. Take your time and think it through. Sparkle. Yes, Sparkle. The most enigmatic and elusive character in the entire story. But, unfortunately, she was the first to uncover the truth, and she did purposefully attack you to create confusion. By the way, she left me a message to pass on to you. Always make sure you can distinguish reality from imagination. <laughs> Is that a clue, you may wonder? I'm not sure. Although I'm pretty sure that the fatal flaw has nothing to do with that masked fool. Well, although the fake deaths of those two ladies don't align with our initial assumptions, this fact itself doesn't contradict the- I'll go ahead and eliminate that incorrect answer for you. So, what is the fatal flaw? Little Misha, or should I call him the Watchmaker? He's only a segment of memory in a dream bubble, but his ambition for the trailblaze led him to leave the bubble and embark on a grand adventure in Penacony. Well, Misha is a rather special memory zone meme, and he was granted power by the trailblaze, there's still one thing that he shouldn't be able to do. A life born in the memory zone could never manifest in reality. So, why did he appear in the Reverie Hotel in reality? The answer is simple. He is the one fatal flaw that contradicts all our known information. This means that you, who wholeheartedly believe in this memory, are still trapped in the dreamscape at this very moment. Wake up, sleepyhead. Break free from this eternal dream and return to the real world. We'll find... The train is about to make the jump. This way, darling. Thank you so much, Black Swan. <laughs> Finally, I can breathe a sigh of relief. I understand you must be confused, and we'll do our best to shed light on the situation. However, before that, it's essential to know that... This place is the rift between dream and reality. A place reserved only for those who have awakened from Enna's dream. 
Do you remember Sunday's ambitious plan? He intended to harness the power of the Stellaron, the collective will of over 100,000 Oak family members, and the desires of everyone in Penacone to usurp the harmony and restore the order. Unfortunately, it didn't stop there. From the early days of our journey into Asdana, we were already affected by the Stellaron. That strange dreamscape where we met. Maybe it was a sign that your thoughts were beginning to drift away. I don't think the goal of the Order was to put everyone into a deep sleep. Quite the contrary. They used the Stellaron to catalyze the leakage of Astana's Memoria into the material world, allowing the dreamscape to blend with reality. And that included a lot of Memoria from the Beyond the Sky Choir. As time came and went, the dreams eventually became indistinguishable from reality, and reality became an illusion. People think they are awake, but their spirits have long since stepped into the Temple of Order. This is what makes Anna's dream so powerful. In this paradise governed by the Order, everyone indulges in their delightful dreams and lives happily ever after. I believe what you experienced in the sweet dream, except for that flaw, was real. Only in this way could you reach the destination, lifting the crisis in Penacone and embarking on your next trailblazing expedition. If it wasn't for Acheron's plan, we might have been trapped in this dream forever. Fortunately, while the path of the Order governs all things, it can't affect the Nihility. I came to realize this when the Dream Master tried to expel me at any cost. This is also why you felt a sense of peculiarity when traveling with her. Well, I'm not as fortunate as she is. Even if I'm a memo keeper, I was still influenced by the power of the Order and fell into hallucinations. However, thanks to your memories, now we still have a chance to turn the tide. For mortals, even if they possess the great power of a path, they can't create a flawless world like gods do. That's why there was a flaw in your dream. In other words, once you have realized the world is not real, you'll have a chance to break free from the dream. The flaw in your dream lies within Misha, who could have never appeared in reality. When I turned the pages of your memories, I realized that I was in an illusion, too. Now Sunday has usurped the power of the Harmonious Choir through the Charmony Festival. Asdana has thus fallen into Anna's dream, transforming everyone equally into the notes of the Eon. Failure doesn't mean weakness. Only the strong can gather the will to resist the Order and try to break free. We still have a chance, though. To make it happen. Please, Black Swan, guide us to those with a strong will. All right, please come with me. These people are... They're the ones who accept Anna's dream and indulge in their happy illusions. We have no means to wake them up now. Not even your clockwork will do the trick.
pays off. Here we are. It's... Robin? Finally. You've arrived. Let me introduce you to Robin. She woke up from Anna's dream by her own will. And it's this tough lady who led us here with her song. I woke up for the same reason as all of you. In the dream, I experienced something that could never occur in reality. Are we going to look it up in a cage? I want to see it fly freely in the sky. Without us, this bird would be too fragile to survive on its own. Do you want- No, but- then let's take care of it together until it can return to the sky. Uh, uh huh? Birds have wings because they're meant to fly. Even if they may crash on the ground one day, they shouldn't be trapped in a cage. <laughs> Birds belong to the sky, so we should help them return there, right? The illusion was so impossibly blissful that I realized it was just a dream. And this is our final hope. Anna's dream is founded upon the Harmonious Choir. Namely, everyone shared wishes. It will only materialize once the aspirations of all beings in Penacony merge as one. At present, it has become impervious due to people's desire to remain slumbering within the dream. And in order to destroy it... We must make everyone in Penacony want to wake up. Now comes the tricky part. How do we do it? yearning for sweet illusions borders on obsession, leading them to subconsciously resist the harsh reality. Therefore, I carefully selected a moment where she was completely unguarded, guiding her to uncover the truth herself to make her regain her consciousness. However, to wake up everyone in Panacone and get them to share the same determination, that would be nearly impossible. Indeed. I'm afraid it's almost as difficult as resurrecting an Eon. But we can't just stay here and do nothing. This is a critical moment for the whole universe. Who cares about some dumb number? <laughs> Thanks to Black Swan. Mm -hmm. You're welcome. And thanks to the Memo Keepers in Penacone too. I believe your partners have also awakened from their dreams. This is the first step of our plan. With the assistance from the Garden of Recollection, those who possess a strong will, like you, will gradually awaken from the dream. These free wills are the discord that will sway Anna's dream. However, Awakening a mere handful of individuals is insignificant compared to the vast number of people immersed in the dream. 
We must find other ways to awaken the free will of millions of people within a short period. If breaking through from the inside proves challenging, we can seek assistance from the outside. We've long been aware of a potential solution. As Donna is a galaxy known for its abundant memoria and the remarkable phenomenon known as synesthesia dreamscape. When people first enter this place, they often find themselves and others sharing a collective dream. At this very moment, there is only one dream encompassing the entire Asdana system. So, you mean, if we can attract a large number of outsiders to this system, their free will would intertwine with this dream and shake it to its core? However, those outsiders might also succumb to the dream and become the foundation of the Order instead. The real challenge is, how can we gather a huge number of people as determined as you within a short period of time? <sighs> Looks like the JDAP Kiss of Allying Oath will be the only solution. No. No need for that. Keep your once in a lifetime treasure. We don't need to bother the Sienjo Alliance for such a tiny request. You, you want thousands of people with unwavering free will? <laughs> That's easy. Just leave it to us, Galaxy Rangers. You can gather Galaxy Rangers? <laughs> Outsiders may see Galaxy Rangers as elusive and disconnected individuals, and actually, they're right. And that's why we have- Do you know what it is, Acheron? It's the relic I return to you. Exactly. Its owner must have told you that it's meaningless to anyone other than a Galaxy Ranger, and that it can only fulfill its purpose when returned to its rightful owner. Because it's a burial artifact, worthy only of a hero who has served the Galaxy Rangers with honor. When its light illuminates the universe, it means the fall of a hero, and in the direction it falls, countless meteors will streak across the sky. Those meteors are Galaxy Rangers coming from all corners of the cosmos, driven by a shared purpose, without questioning the cause or counting the cost, because we abide by a bottom line. The shooting stars of the hunt only descend on the longest night, and with them comes the dawn. We've stayed silent for far too long. Now, it's time to remind all the cowards, oppressors, and villains of the universe of our presence. I'll be the one to ignite the first spark. Once the dreamscape is swayed, I'll complete the second step. I'll fine-tune the slumbering souls with the Song of the Harmony, interrupting them with the discord of Trailblaze and guiding them towards reality. It's true that some people are born strong, and others are born weak. If the Trailblaze is the target of heroes, then the Harmony will guarantee that the strong help the weak. Only the people of their path of happiness should be forged by themselves. While I may not be a nameless, I'm willing to instill curtness includes my brother as well. Anna's dream is too cruel for him and everyone else. Your plan sounds well-conceived, but still, it appears somewhat idealistic and romantic. The flaws rooted in you- I agree with you, Black Swan. 
That's why the most critical aspect of this plan is not to convince everyone to choose the right path. but to inspire them to save themselves. <laughs> so, you're the key in the end, I assume? The Harmonious Choir possesses the power of an emanator. To overcome it, you'll need the same level of power. The final step in destroying the sweet dream will be my responsibility. That's a relief to hear. <sighs> now that our roles are assigned, let's get to our battlefield and pose a grand finale. May I have a moment alone with you? There's one more thing I need to explain to you. This grand festival is drawing to its close. This is the starting point for the ultimate stage of our journey. Just as it marked the beginning of all the stories in Panacone. I have faith in you. However, before we depart, there is one more thing I must tell you. There's something you should know. We were able to locate you within this boundless dream and find the key to breaking free from the dream, all because of one person's unwavering dedication. Firefly. She awakened from the dream ahead of others, discovered the Express amidst the stars, and brought us valuable information about the remnants of the Order. She may have been aided by the script, and it came at a cost. As you know, Firefly is a stowaway who entered the dreamscape in a different way from ours. Without the dream pool in the hotel or assistance from the family, she can only awaken from this dream in one way. A real death. We mustn't fail her determination. I'm not implying that we must win this fight no matter what, but our resolve should match that of that courageous lady. Are you ready? Very well. Now, please close your eyes 